Three, two, one, boom, we're back. Um, we've got a sick episode for everyone today. Really looking forward to this one. UFC star, Laurent Murphy, MMA fighter, former Muay Thai fighter, Andy Lofthouse. Guys, thank you for coming in. Really, really looking forward to this one. How are you both? You both okay? Good, good. Feeling good, man. Feeling good. Right, before we get into this, we've just got a few sponsor shout outs to do. So the first one is uh, a page on Instagram and a YouTube page. Uh, pure pad work, uh, as they can see up on the screen there. Oh, I'm there. Me and Louis. <laughs> um, yeah, so these guys, uh, they share compilation of the pad work videos for it's just so fighters can get themselves out there seen, um, smashing the pads. You can see there's ties, there's young up and comers, Stuart Stable is there. It's not just for elite level guys as well, it's for the young up and comers. Um, they started on Instagram <coughs> um, just sharing. Uh, Padua videos and stuff like that and uh, now they've grown on YouTube and the YouTube channel is really growing it so it's pure pad work so if anyone wants to get themselves uh, on this page um, drop them an inbox on Instagram give them a follow you can check out the page give them a follow on YouTube as well there I am again look good looking guy uh, they are really really good for getting you out, a fighter out there like Everyone knows a fighter needs marketing and they need pushing and they need people to see the work and what goes into training, etc. So these guys are a great page for that. So give them a follow, give them a shout. Next one, obviously, we've got these boys again. We're back. The Manscaped boys. You know what? Someone fucking said to me on Instagram yesterday. They went, it's very sad that you have been used to be an elite level fighter and now you're promoting ball shavers. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I didn't even have no to say. I, I text Schooly. I went, Schooly, what can I say back to this? The bastard, he's done me. But listen, if it's good enough for the UFC and good enough for fucking UFC fighters like Adesanya, it's good enough for me. So Manscaped, don't forget, 20% off um, with the code Kicking It for all the products, the ball toner, the ball spray, you get underpants, you get all sorts with it if you get like the, the full kit. Lawnmower 3.0. Like I said before, everyone's had a bit of a massacre at one point or another when they've been down there trying to groom themselves. So this is the the bit of kit that you need if you are looking for some male grooming down below the belt. Right, let's get into it, boys. Thank you for coming on. Um, Rome, I'm going to start with you, mate, because uh, you have bounced onto the scene in the UFC. Um, but you know what? You have not fucking given me given an easy ride. Like your first two opponents have had like double the experience you had. You are, is it 10 and 0 you are now, is it? 9 and 0, and nine, one draw. 9 and 0, so 10 fights, yeah. no losses, un, unbeaten, undefeated still. Two fights in the UFC. Your first fight in the UFC, you went straight in against one of Khabib boys. Yeah, he was more experienced than you. It ended up being a draw. It was a fucking sick fight. How, what was your mindset going into that? Thinking this guy's from a gym like Khabib's gym, obviously. Khabib, pound for pound, one of the best at the minute. Obviously thinking, right, this is my big shot here. Was you a bit? Was it a bit daunting going again to get someone a bit more experienced? You were from that gym, or did you just think, you know what, fuck this, this is my time? What were your mindset going into that fight? Yeah, so it was kind of like when I first got the call, I just thought, yeah, here's my chance to blow in it. So it's just like, fuck it, I don't care in it, I'll fight anyone. But um, like through that camp, it was only a short camp, three and a half weeks. I think there's only one point where I thought, shit, I'm fighting a killer here. Do you get yeah. what I'm saying? And and that, at that point, I um, tore my MCL ligament in my knee. So I'm sat on my bed. I'm just I'm just like playing my PlayStation. That's a bad injury for a, a fucking an MMA guy as exactly. well, especially with like grappling the and twisting. And yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like it's like shit. I'm injured. I can barely walk. I'm there watching. I made the mistake of put his fights on my TV. I'm sat there in bed, injured, watching this guy's fights, and he's just knocking everyone out. Mm -hmm. I'm like shit. So my head started to go there, but once I started once I started training again, I was confident again in, in my ability and stuff. Um, but yeah, man, we got there. Yeah, man. you obviously trained beside him, Andy. How was he going into that fight and stuff? Were you? Did you have any worries, or did you feel? Did you have every confidence in his abilities and that? Because obviously we just did a bit of training then, and I just seen the the natural talent that he has. Obviously got, and we only trained for half an hour. Yeah. So you're alongside him every day, so you must like obviously see the potential that this guy has got. Ah, it's madness, like. You just know sometimes when someone's got it, they've got it, and Lerone's got it. Yeah. And when it doesn't matter who they put him up against, I'll always say yeah. So he like sometimes he'll, he'll be thinking about a fight. Should we ask for a fight? And he'll ask like my opinion, and I'm just like yeah, whatever, because he normalizes everything, and that's the difference between him and everyone else. You know, he's yeah, don't care. Talk us through that fight a little bit, because obviously he had uh, he was looking for a lot of takedowns and stuff in that fight. And did you have a specific game plan going into that, or was obviously? 
Khabib's team is obviously going to be a good good wrestler and look for the takedown and stuff. What were your game plan going into that? And how did the fight pan out? Was it how you saw it panning out? Obviously, it ended in a draw. Just talk us through it a little bit. Yeah, so the game plan going into that one was obviously to keep it on the feet. He's a wrestler. I'm a striker. Um, just stuff the takedowns, maybe get him, drag him into deep waters, get him tired and finish him. That was the game plan going in. But um, when we got in there, obviously, he classes himself as a striker. But once we started striking, he started trying to wrestle. Yeah. Um, I had a bad start to the round. I got I got dropped in the first maybe what first minute or something. I, I was I was messing about, so it was my fault. Like I was trying to get comfortable in there. It's like it's like I've been I've been dreaming about that position for years, and then when I got there, it's like shit. I'm here. It's a bit surreal yeah, sometimes, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I totally get what you mean with that one. So I was like taking in the scenery more than what's in front of me. Do you get what I'm saying? So I got I got caught cold. Um, I got up, and then that's when the fight was on. Then um, he started fading. Um, I thought I won the fight in in all fairness, but when you leave it like when it's a close fight, it can go either way. It's just it's just about how um, the judges see it. So we went into the second round. I started picking him off. He was kind of running off, trying to wrestle. Got tucked down a few times. Um, went into the third round. That's when um, I thought I was going to stop him. I thought he's give all, all he's got. I thought I was going to stop him. Out striking him for the first couple of minutes, and I threw a stupid kick. Inexperienced. I threw a body kick and he caught it, took it, took me down. You reckon that's what just evened it for yeah, the judges a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, definitely, bit. definitely. There, there seems to be like some, like sometimes a bit of inconsistency with the judging in the, in M MMA and UFC and stuff like it. It all depends what one certain judge is looking for. Mm. Um, because sometimes I'll be so sure that someone's won a fight and it'll end up being like a split decision and stuff. And I'll be like, eh, how has that happened? How come... Two judges give it so far one way, but the other one's gone a totally different way. Is that just how the judges are seeing it and what they're looking for? I think I think it's the same thing you said. It's like some some people believe that wrestling's um, scores greater than striking, and I think it needs to be across the board more a certain scoring system because it's not fair, is it? No, not at all. You're the fight it, you know, talking about. I was about to say, yeah, <laughs> we, we we've been through this for years, yes. haven't we? Within the Muay Thai scene, obviously, Andy, you've. Uh, you were a big name in the UK Muay Thai scene. You've had a lot of fights. That is basically the exact same exactly. thing we have gone through for years, yeah. isn't it? Mm. And I think judging just comes down to like perception. That's my opinion about every martial art is you're going to see so we could have the same book and take a total different story from that book. So Yeah, exactly. It's was that one of the reasons why you got into MMA? Were you sick of all that? Because I know a lot of fighters who have done that just said, you know no, what, I'm I just personally don't think my style suited Thai. Yeah. I was not your like traditional Thai boxer, was I, to be no, fair? No, yeah, so. yeah. I was always interested in MMA. I'd stopped MMA Thai because I just, I didn't know if I was working a lot, finding it hard, weren't hungry. And I'm not just going to carry on fighting for the sake of it. I'd done that. Done that when I was a kid, honestly. Yeah, so, yeah you, you know, need, obviously. You've got to have the hunger. The, exactly. And it, in a sport like Thai boxing, if the hunger's not there, if you're just getting in to go through the motions, you're going to get hurt, are you? Yeah. Um, so how did you feel at the end of the outcome of the of that fight, mate? It came out a draw. Did you think, you know what, it, Want too bad, or did you think, nah, I won that. I'm gonna fucking show him this next fight. What's so, what? So when the first was given the um, decision, I I actually at that time thought I might have lost the yeah. fight because of the wrestling and stuff. So when when the draw came out, I thought, yeah, well, I done all right there, yeah. I done all right, didn't I? But because he had double the experience, you yeah, had, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only had eight pro fights. I think he had like twenty. Oh, over double, fucking hell. Yeah, exactly. So it's getting a draw, done all right. Three weeks notice. Um, but when I watched the fight back, I thought I thought I won. Yeah. But, and then that just gave me more hunger then to go and get the win. So obviously coming off that one, your next fight was on the Fight Island mm. uh, against uh, Ramos. How did that come? Did, did they give you a call? Obviously COVID's come in here. Um, everything's been locked down. How was your training before that fight? Were you still ticking over? And did you have, how long did you have in a camp and stuff? Was it like a late call or were it just you still had a bit of time to get yeah. yourself? So, um, I was supposed to fight in March on USC London in the O2 Arena. That got cancelled because of the COVID stuff. Um, so, we had like we went into lockdown in the UK. So, I had, I had like a week in my house where I didn't really do nothing. But I was hitting the bag in the garden and stuff, staying fit. And then um, a week later, I was, I was on like some conference call with like Dana, like all the fighters. And he was basically saying, stay ready. We can be we can be back anytime. So, right. it, was, it was like one of the things I just had to train through then. So, what was that? Jul June? Uh, it was earlier March. than that. Like end of March, April. Yeah, end of March, April. That was so. After that, um, we got back in the gym, me, Lofty, Carl Prince. We just trained together as a free, just hitting pads or sparring or whatever. So I got, I ended up getting a call in June to say to fight on in July. And you've only been just training with your free people? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and then 
your camp was like six weeks. Yeah, about yeah. about six weeks. Yeah, about six weeks it was. But obviously, I've been training all the way through yeah. anyway, just so I was fit. That goes back to I think we mentioned talking about this just before we went on air um, about well, you're either a fighter or you're not. Because mm. there'd be some fighters out there. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I fucking I definitely know a few. Who will go, ooh, no, I've only got three people training with me. I won't be ready. And do you know what I mean? But coming back, that's obviously down to your mentality that you, you're here to prove a point and you want want to fight and you're going to be ready. Because, I know, like I just said, I know many who would have gone, ooh, you know what, six weeks. I've only got three people. You've just gone fucking six weeks, right? I'll be there. Mm. Yeah. Every excuse. We've got every excuse not to train and fight now, yeah. haven't we? So, yeah. yeah fighters yeah. will fight. People who are unsure won't. Well, so yeah. That that, that fighters will fight and yeah. that, that's the end of that. So how was your experience? Uh, obviously, you had your, your camp leading up to that. How was the experience on the island? Obviously, no crowds. Or was, he, was he anyone in crowds? Nah, is there no one there at all? Is that what it is? people, just cameramen and yeah. obviously Dana and that. It's just a few people, but it was, was, it was sorry, crazy. Were any of the, like, the isolation stuff, did that throw you out or anything at all? Or were you just tunnel vision looking for your, obviously, winning on that stage? Was it just tunnel vision all the way? Yeah, it was kind of tunnel vision. I just wanted to win in it. That's all I was going for. I was going there to do a job. But the experience wasn't that was it not bad anyway all the quarantine stuff it was it was pretty fun man it was yeah pretty fun i was i was speaking to um john gillies because he went over there with tom aspinall and he just said mm. yeah it's a non at fighters seem too bothered about it i think they all took it in the stride like oh someone knew this do you yeah, know yeah, i mean this yeah. that type of thing so you fought um R ricardo ramos again more experience than you mm. um very unorthodox i remember watching that fight and he was doing some crazy shit trying yeah. to throw you off crazy spinning yeah and man. that that move that we were on about before where he would try to like cross his legs and yeah. stuff that looked like it would have thrown many fighters off but you kept your cool in ended up in a solid position and, and ground and pound and just punched his lights out basically yeah, that elbow though uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Elbow. It's sick. like a tie box we appreciate yeah like that, <laughs> definitely mate um talk us through that fight a little bit yeah so we come out throwing like mad kicks and that and i've never experienced that before so i was just like i need to find my range it took me longer than expected to find my range and stuff because when mad kicks are coming at you like that, someone's trying to take your head off. It's like well, he did st stuff in that fight that I've never even seen before. Exactly. Like, literally, never ever seen. Yeah, yeah. So I just unless thought, it were him doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, I just thought, keep your distance, find his timing, find his range, and then once I clinched up with him and I felt his strength, I kind of knew I was I was going to take that fight. The on that who was the main event on that on that show? Um, Laurel, Danny Ige. Yeah. No, Dan, <laughs> Danny Ige, Kelvin Qatar. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, that is on the, the when the Fight Island came about. Then this, that must have been massive for you because there weren't many fights happening. Everyone was watching them, mm. so you must have known. Then that obviously the fucking everyone's eyes are on me. Here. It's a massive time to shine. Did you feel any pressure on yourself, or were it, or were it the hunger and the tunnel vision again? Nah, no, no pressure going into that fight. It, there's probably one time where I felt, wow, I'm going to fight on Fight Island now. Everyone's watching. There's millions of people um, watching. And that was that was in the hotel room before the fight. Literally, and all, every, all fighters get that. Do you yeah, know what I'm saying? of so, course. It's not. It, it was nothing new. I was pumped, man. Couldn't to be wait. fair, your first fight though, that were on a huge, huge show, wasn't it? Mm. That one that could be the main event. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I suppose when you've been in there for that one, you've already been under exactly. them lights with yeah. Yeah, one yeah. of the biggest shows of the year, etc. Mm. You were probably going to be ready for that one. You really? Yeah, all day. I thought like it's going to be hard to match um, fighting on that Khabib card, unless I'm obviously main event or something. Yeah, it's a big card. So obviously you've fought both of these guys who have been a lot more experienced than you. A draw, which possibly could have gone to you as a win. And a huge KO win. How do you think, see that going forward now? Do, you, is, do that give you a lot of confidence for the future? Now you've put them two performances against people who are a lot more experienced than you. That must you must your confidence must be skyrocketed after that. It is and it's not. I don't. I don't really see that as a big achieve like a big achievement yet. Really, I think. I, I think when I start beating people in the top fifteen, that's when it's like. Phew. I'm doing yeah. it now. I, he never I, gives himself credit for it. Nah, because I should be. I should be. I think I should be beating them guys anyway. Like I should have definitely won the first one as well. But um, I'm just trying to aim a bit higher in it. Yeah, yeah. Step by step, yeah, just yeah, taking so it slowly yeah, yeah, yeah. and slowly. Where do you see him going after this one, Lofty? What do you see for him next? Well, world is oyster. Mm. Because yeah, I, I personally think he can take his pick now. Does he? Does he want maybe a bit of a? It's not an easier fight because no one in the UFC is an easier fight. Yeah. But maybe just a fight to get more cage time. Or does he try and go top 15 straight away? He can pick and choose. It don't, don't really matter, I don't think. What um, Before you got signed by the UFC, were you seven fights or eight fights unbeaten, were it? Seven, was it eight? Eight and all. Eight and yeah, all. it was eight and all, before, yeah. What organisations were you with then? Uh, just small shows, really. like Just like the local shows, I was on the FCCs. Um, I felt, 
was it Celtic Gladiator? Celtic Gladiator. Tankles. Ice. Just a few. Just a few of the local yeah, ones. So not but, even not even like your Cage Warriors, but Bomber is always. And when you got the call, how uh, wow, did that feel then when you got that call and got told that, listen, you want Dana White wants to sign you? That must have been fucking surreal. It was weird, you know. I just got back from Jamaica, so like, I was literally on my way to training with um, with one of my jujitsu coaches, Yaya uh, from Denmark, and was speaking about people missing opportunities and stuff um, with the UFC. And then next minute, I get a message through, or oh, um, do you want to take this fight in the UFC? I'm thinking, like, is this been sent to me? <laughs> it's you know, a dream. Like, yeah, yeah. Our, our coach, Carl Jones, uh, Carl Prince, sorry, said to me, uh, he sent the message, and he replied, "Who's that for?" <laughs> I didn't think it was for me. I didn't think it was for he's, me. He's had that offer, <laughs> and then three and a half weeks. But I didn't. Even, I didn't even know who the fighter was. I just said, "Is yeah. that all it was?" Three and a half weeks notice yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that's eighty-two kilos. Yeah, massive. Yeah. Big I, fat face. We said everything. this when we were training early. I can't believe you fight a one-four-five man because that's what I fight on one championship. And you're fucking miles bigger than I me. I feel small, you know. I better get down to one three five. <laughs> me, I think. Looking, looking at you. Uh, how old were you when you had your first pro fight? Then, in fact, how old were you on your first amateur fight? And I'm gonna go. So I started at 22 years old. And I, I think started it, quite late starting yeah, as well. Yeah, really, yeah, it was, it was, it was. And I, started, I think, I think I had my first amateur fight in the February after. So that would have been about six months after I started. This is the mad thing, yeah. It's like from starting the training, doing a bit of boxing when you've been younger and that, and it six years training. That is insane to get seven to the now, UFC. Seven, yeah, seven, seven years. years. Seven years. That's levels it's that and is. unbeaten yeah. as well. Yeah. That again, like we said, about said when I had him on the pads earlier, like the natural talent, he could see it's there. He's just fucking yeah. His reactions, his power, his athleticism, it's all it is all there. Uh what got you started on your MMA journey then? What got you into it? So I used to I used to like I used to like watching it like I had the first UFC D- DVDs while my dad did and I used to I used to like watching it then so I've always been into fighting and stuff like that I used to fight when I was a kid and stuff just out and about but um Lord, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just got into it through then and then I ended up going to K Moose's fight in FCC mm. and FCC actually that was my first MMA fight I went to see live I was like this was sick everyone was going mad when he won and that, and I just I just wanted that feeling in it, so I started training in a gym called in Manchester called All Powers, and then it just the went from there. Yeah, 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 Panic Panic yeah, gym, yeah. yeah. It just went from there, man. It just went from there. I just started like getting better and better. And at what stage did you think you know what? Fucking all right at this. I might I might have a fight. Or were the other people saying, "Hey, you're good. You need to have a fight." Or nah, were you that wanted to fight? Nah, I got thrown in. I didn't want to fight. Yeah. I, I, I <laughs> get just, in there. Yeah, I was just doing it for fun, and then it's like. Oh, you fight. You, there's a fight for you there for you in six weeks or four to six weeks. Can't remember how, what it was. And I was like, "I'm already. I've only been training six months." Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? It was scary, man. The thing is, when someone just throws you in like that, you sort of like you don't want to say no. You don't want to look like a pussy. Yeah, and all yeah, I do yeah, and yeah, I can't yeah, say yeah. I can't. I can't say no. Uh, but the next minute, you stood there. You got gloves on. You stood in the ring, looking across at someone, and you're like, "Shit! What the <laughs> fuck am I doing?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, it was so I mad. still do that to this yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Like, you know what? Before my last fight, I just thought to myself, what? Why am I here? It's like number 115. What the <laughs> fuck am I doing? What am I honestly doing? Do you but still then, get that? No, yeah. Yeah, I still That's just think to me, it just popped into my head. Like, I'll be like just another day off is sometimes but mm. then just for one split second that thought will just creep in and go what are you doing what are you doing, are you doing? Mad, and then it, it just disappears again so him, like for me as a fighter i always found if them short notice fights i didn't care yeah whereas if i had a camp and i was coming into the fight then i'd get in yeah. i'd be shit myself yeah. thinking no i'm not good You've at this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. have you trained with him since day one then so, uh so i was over in liverpool originally um and then i think 216, 216 think, yeah, probably yeah, we just started doing a bit of training but it's mainly this year isn't it yeah, since yeah. lockdown we've st- come close friends and when part, you family. obviously you were with uh salford right salford you... timu with daz yeah timu yeah, yeah, yeah timu yeah, yeah. with daz when you left there then uh what where, where did you go for your mma training i was over at aspire, aspire so that's it yeah timu closed mm. so we just stopped doing tie and then daz came over to aspire as well as the striking coach so yeah yeah and we just went there and how many fights have you had now in mma six Four wins, two but losses. you've got this fucking horrific injury that we have to bring up. You need to tell people about this. What have you done to your neck? Herniated disc in my neck. Yeah, so basically, fucking got a broken neck near it. <laughs> <laughs> I can uh, get a blue badge, I think. Yeah, yeah. Sure <laughs> Free parking for life. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, yeah, you've got to have an up. Do you want to tell them how that happened? So just in January, I was wrestling, drilling in the gym. Um, I took someone down and someone fell into the top of my head and I just felt a crunch. And just like pins and needles in my arm, loss of feeling in my hand. And I thought it was like a stinger injury where, you know, like you just like jolt your neck and get 
bit of a muscle injury. Well, do you know what? The last time I would, had that, I was brushing my teeth on the morning. I woke up and I just went like that and I... Oh, and it's yeah. got that rush of blood and it all feels warm and that fucked me up for like that two tingling, days yeah. brushing my teeth so oh, god knows yeah. what that felt like when you did that mate Man, i just tra- i just trained around it and then i fought in march fought a bit of a bum because obviously i wasn't tr- i wasn't wrestling so i'd done the training camp got out there just had the fight to get a bit more cage time yeah and then carried on and then back when and then it was just getting worse and then i was training with one of the dagestanis in the gym he took me down and as he took me down, he said to our coach, see that takedown? I was sick that way. It's uh, my ego then. <laughs> I got up, I was like, okay. And I threw a shot and then I took him down. And then like in the scramble, I just like collapsed and oh. just couldn't walk or anything. It was just agony. And that's going to be an operation and... Yeah, yeah. Just six, waiting, yeah. Six to 12 months recovery time. But. Nightmare. Have you ever had any bad injuries? Have you been all right? Nah, uh, I used to play football as a kid and I uh, tore my ACL. Ooh, that's a bad injury. That's, that's a fucking bad injury. terrible. I was only out for six to a year. I can't even remember. I didn't re- really go back to sport yeah. after that. So I was just out. It was, it was weak for ages, man. The worst thing you can do. But And then in my pro, first pro fight, I broke my hand. Oh, fuck. Yeah, um, two bones here. These oh, shit. Is it plated up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mine's yeah. plated up as Is well it? from there. That's why you both got horrible left up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was reading somewhere that you're friends with Dominic Cruz. Yeah. As well. Yeah, how, how did that friendship come about? So I went to America in 2015. On a training trip, I um, stayed, stayed at his house and stuff. Oh, did you? Oh, mm. nice. And then um, done some training there for like six weeks, man. But it was just mad to like see how a world champion trains. And he, he's literally in camp all year round. Really? He trains twice a day and that. Even if no fight, even no fight. No fight. Yeah. No fight. I mean, we talk about camps and that, but fighting should be your life. It should be your lifestyle, mm. isn't it? It's yeah. 100%. Not, yeah. I mean, like when I'm outside the gym, I still train all the time. But the thing is, I'm old now. So if I were in fight camp all the time, I'd be injured to so fuck saying, constantly. I would yeah. be. I would be. But I, I honestly, I remember like in the scene ten years ago, people saying, "Oh, Liam's getting a bit old now. He's probably gonna have two or three more fights." Fucking it's hell! It's like him. <laughs> <laughs> ten years later, he's still five. I'm still going strong. Yeah. 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 Silver yeah. fox, mate. Because Trust people me. used to just have the camps, didn't they? They train yeah. for a fight, fight. But you've lived the lifestyle. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, that's the thing. I'll still like. I've got. I don't even know what's happening with any sort of fights at the minute. But I'm still in the gym training every day, mm. most days twice. But if my body starts to feel a bit like ropey or tightened up i'll just have two days off yeah obviously yeah. when you're in fight camp i don't know about anyone else but i used to feel guilty if i if i have a day off or go get a massage and rest for the rest of the day mm. i'll be sat at home and i'll be thinking oh fucking hell i'm having a day off here yeah, my, yeah, my opponent's yeah, yeah. not having a day off Yo, this, be... this happened last fight camp didn't it so he was like oh, i can't have a day off everyone's training harder but like that inexperience i was like bro just have a day off listen to your body and he's like nah i'll get through it i'll be sweet I'll yeah be but sweet. it's different and, from, i feel like i'm playing catch up because i've not i've not do you yeah, know what I'm saying? I, what I started mean. late, yeah. so I'm, yeah. play, I'm playing catch up. Most of these guys have trained for like 20 years all their life. Do you know what nah, I'm saying? So they're, 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 they've got to train. A lot of them have to train because they haven't got that little bit of natural ability. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah that's true also. But um, when you're with MMA, I suppose if your body is like really in bits and you're thinking, no, I can't be wrestling today, maybe just a bit of boxing pad work or something like that that you can yeah. do just a bit of sharpening. You can always up, do, always do a li- yeah. just a little bit of something that ain't going to take it out. Like, Obviously, wrestling, you don't want to be fucking doing that when your body's in bits and stuff yeah. like that, getting slammed all over the place, do you? It's the hard, I think that's literally the hardest do, training yeah. I've ever done. Do you know what? People have always said to me, like, said, oh, don't you fancy having an M- a go at MMA? I tried wrestling fucking once, mate, and I thought, you know what? <laughs> I'm never doing that again, ever in my life. It was, cause I thought, oh, it'll be similar to clinch work. Clinch work ain't that tiring. It's, but, oh, mate, I fucked after about 30 seconds. I thought, nah, I couldn't have an MMA yeah, fight. It, it, maybe the clinch work's not that tiring, yeah. but how do you feel the next three days after? Yeah, you know, true, yeah, off yeah. Your neck for But imagine I'm slamming you on floor and nah, Shh, I couldn't horrible, do it. Horrible. I could not do it. Um, when you come back from injury... How old are you now? 29. Oh, you're only 29? You're still a fucking baby, mate. Yeah. Don't look it old, yeah. <laughs> 18 years I've been fighting. It's yeah. dark, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I suppose it's not the actual age, it's the how long you've been yeah, doing yeah. it. That, yeah. uh, f- do you know what? Age. Fighting stupid. Training stupid. Taking shots because of, you know. That's the I'm thing. In, uh, it's never been the actual fights I've I've felt that I've took it too much out of me. It's been the fucking training. I've because like you mentioned earlier, like the sparring in Thai boxing, it's there's stupid. no movement, mate. Yeah. You just stand there and batter each other, don't you? And it's like you said again about the ego thing earlier. Most fucking fighters who are fighters, like we were on about earlier, fighters, they won't have someone in sparring to give them a lick and let them get away with it. You're gonna yeah, end up yeah. getting in wars, especially when you're sparring with elite level guys and good level yeah. guys mm. all the time. It's the 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 camps that to sort of take you out of you in Thai boxing rather than the fights. Would you agree with that? Because they are tough. Yeah, yeah, 100%. No, I think at, like, at Team U, we had Carlos. 
Mm. Middle weight. He's fucking massive. Yeah, and Carlos was my sparring partner. You're about fought, 85 like, kilo. What's around at 90 or 100 <laughs> kilos? Yeah, it's big, isn't it? Yeah. So, like, I was sparring him and just. I remember sparring Tom Aspinall once because his dad was our Mate, coach down there. Mate, he's fucking humongous. And he can move. Yeah. And I had a headache for a week after. And I thought, nah, I can't spar with him again. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's the, it's the camps, man. It's the same with MMA. It's like the last camp I've done. I think there's some some of the spars were dark, wouldn't yeah. they? Yeah. Come out with black eyes and all sorts. But in the fight, I think I got two leg kicks. That's about it. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's mad. It's mad. Um, when you do come back from injury... Are you gonna be looking to fight again like ASAP? Or are you gonna let yourself like heal up a bit? Or are you just gonna just jump straight back in? And I'm gonna take the healing process, let it like listen to my body, heal properly, and then yeah, I think we're good to go again, isn't it? <laughs> he says I've still got more in me, you know, so yeah. We'll see in it. You but you know yourself, don't you? Yeah. Like, um I'm not one of those people that I, I don't need fight. I'm still around fighting, so yeah, yeah. I'm not like I don't need to do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm I happy totally. doing what I'm doing anyway. So what I've found as I've got older, it's not so much like that. I feel sharp fast strong and fit still it's just the recovering from actual injuries yeah that's been a bastard as the, the older i've got like if five six years ago if i were injured two days sound gone but now it might be like four or five days and it's just having to like train smart around the injuries mm. and try and not make them worse because you can't have four days off in the middle of a camp do you know what i mean it's just having yeah. to train around them and find different ways and fucking having an ice bath nearly every bastard day and oh, stuff which i fucking hate horrible that's the how, how, how was your body at all because how many amateur mma fights did you have before you went pro i only had four four so you've had like four, so, 14 fights yeah but that's 14 camps in mma really is fucking hard bro. Like, i've done more than 14 yeah, camps i've yeah. done i've done camps after camp and get, fights getting cancelled and stuff so yeah. i've done, done a lot of camps and Obviously, when I first started as well, I've done a lot of sparring because yeah. you got to, aren't you? To you you're going to learn and yeah, yeah, that's yeah. where you're going to do it. You, uh, do you, you don't eat meat, do you? No, yeah. no, no. Do you think that helps with your recovery and stuff? Like, can you just talk us a little bit about how, how that is? Because I know some fighters will swear by not eating meat and they're fucking in amazing shape. Mm. And I always will go, ooh, I tried it. I had no power. I've never tried it myself. So what's can you? What's the pros and cons? Is the... For me, personally, I think it's just like more of a weight a weight issue. Um, I don't think it gives you more power or less power or whatever. Um, I think it's just more of the weight. Like I used to walk around 83 key standard, like mm. standard and I cut out the meat and I'm I, like the most I get to now is like 80 if I'm eating shit. Like yeah, low, yeah. do you get what I'm saying? But I, I walk around about 78 now. Do you eat fish? Are you pescatarian? Yeah, yeah, is it pescatarian? pescatarian yeah, yeah. Ah, right, right, right. So I bought like, that's <clears> a sick, so for what, not my last fight, the fight before Cage Warriors it was. I was still eating chicken and stuff before that fight, and then he said, "Just cut that out, eat fish, and you'll see the difference." And it was so easy. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So easy. You don't feel slu like sometimes when you eat chicken, you feel a bit sluggish and yeah, like, yeah, or a bit of red meat and that. But fish, red, yeah. red meat is a foot. It kills your fucking yeah. red meat. It's just sat in your in your gut and yeah, you feel tired. And you know what? It's like when you eat red meat, it feels like you've had loads of carbs and stuff. I just feel yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I just yeah. want to go it's, lie down somewhere. For, uh, yeah. It's not you're not supposed to feel like that after food. You're supposed to feel energized. Do you get what I'm saying? That's the thing as well that I've I've found as I've got older. I used to think after morning training, I thought right, better go home and eat loads of carbs now. Mm. And I used to go home and I'd eat loads of carbs, and I, I didn't want to go back to the gym because my body would just gone. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was just slumped. And so now instead of having loads of carbs for my, oops, sorry. Forgot that we're on. Um, having loads of carbs in the afternoon, I'll go home and I'll just have loads of protein. Mm. And then I go back to the gym and I'm energised yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. ready to go again. But some days I'll forget and I'll just think, all right, I'll have some rice for my dinner and I'll feel like shite. Slows you down, I feel, it? I'll yeah, feel it like shite. It does. Um, going back to the UFC. So if, have, you, have you had any idea of when your next fight will be? Well, I've got nothing booked in, but we're, we're aiming for the next fight island, which is supposed to be, um, like for, I think, from like November 28th right through to the 12th, possibly. So I want to get on one of them cards. Any particular one that you've got your eye on or is it just... Fighter. Yeah, mm. any open season or anyone or... Would... It's just whoever they give me, man. It's a big roster and everybody's good, man. Everybody is scary in that division. So it's just whoever they think I should fight at that time, I'm just going to take it. Is there anyone you'd like to see him in with next? Or is you, uh, just anyone there? The better the, the opponent, the better he'll perform, in yeah. my opinion. So I just still feel like... I still feel like... I'd I'd be better not getting tune up fights, but I still need the experience. I of still course. need to get comfortable yeah. in there. Like like I said before, more cage time in it. Yeah, so I need, maybe I need cage time. I need cage time, and like I've, the only time I've fought back to back within like a few space, uh, a few months, I've fought better. Yeah, 
and I've only done that once. All, all my other fights are like six it's months, nine months apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to feel comfortable in there. So when did when did they say the possibility would be? Um, December, between December and November. That'd be nice. And if you could get one at the back end of the year and hopefully then start off the, the next year. Yeah, you yeah, are yeah. right about that because as a fighter, like I the only I've had, I've had many gaps in my career, but when I have like sometimes I think the longest I had were had surgery and I were out for like eight months. Mm. And when I came back, I was fucking shy. It, like my yeah. timing were off. And I thought to myself before the fight, I'll do loads of sparring. I'll make sure my timing's there. I won't skip to beat. And I was just fucking missing shots and my balance were a bit shit and stuff. You can't actually replicate the fight. Like you can yeah. do as much sparring as you want. And nothing's the same as be like being under the lights and the pressure and stuff. Exactly. So. And, the, and the more you can, obviously like you say, you're playing catch up. So mm. obviously you just want to be in there regular now. Um, any of the top guys at the minute, how do you think you'd fare against them at, at the minute? At the minute, right now. Yeah. Do you still believe in yourself so much that you think, you know what, put me in there now and I'd beat them? I'm undefeated, so I, 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 I've not felt that. I know, I know it's possible, obviously, but I've not felt that like somebody's being better than me in there. Somebody, somebody out, outclassing me in there. So at the minute, I believe that I can beat anybody until somebody changes that. Is this the rankings you're getting up school here? Yeah. So we've got the the rankings here on your right hand side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All killers, all of them. Where's the one, four, five? The, on the these right top five. Right these, top, yeah. top five, top absolute five, killers. Yeah. Got Volkanovski, Holloway, Ortega. You know what? Zabit. I did uh, some, I trained uh, T-City uh, when I was out in LA last year. Was he striking like? Good, yeah. Good boxing. Obviously, he's great jujitsu. Mm, mm. Mate, he, he never done Muay Thai. No. I couldn't believe it. He, wow. he said, uh, he went, oh, I've only started doing Muay Thai last month. I said, are you joking? Yeah, but he had uh, Rob Carmen doing a bit with him. Um, which is a straight up Dutch style mm. for how he fights. I yeah, did, I was I just going to say, can we can we allow to call it Muay Thai? Or? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it's just straight up Dutch style what Rob yeah. Carmen does. And I thought, um, I thought, you know, we won't really suit how he how he likes to fight because just stood there going bang 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 bang. But yeah, um, that's, that's not, the difference in it. You just for me when people say I always diss Thai, but it's it's not so much dissing Thai as an art. Thai sick. You just need to adapt it. Exactly. Exactly. I was about to say that. So I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll I think I've got a decent enough understanding and trying stuff that'll work and what don't and like. Yeah, watching that this morning, sick, sick. mate, honestly. Yeah, I'll thank I, you. But oh. I see other Thai coaches now getting MMA fighters and all that. I'm doing Thai and they're stood still hitting pads. You can't Going in straight lines. You can't be that arrogant where you think Thai boxing beats all no. because you'll be on your back yeah. in two seconds flat and you'll get your head punched in <laughs> yeah. if you start, start doing that shit in MMA. But yeah, going back to Ortega, I honestly couldn't believe it. Obviously, his jiu-jitsu was sick and his, his boxing were pretty sharp and stuff like that. And he, he just said, oh, he said, I've never done Muay Thai for like, started last month. I'm like, what the fuck? You were, I'm sure, because he was champion before as well, wasn't he? Was he? Nah, he's, or he, fought, he's fought he for ranked. the belt. Yeah, he's fought he, for the belt, yeah. He was number one ranked or, or mm. number two, well, he's still number two now. Was it, is it when he fought Max Holloway and Max Holloway yeah. was picking his hands up for him? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, well, what? in that fight, that was the insane fight, that, wasn't it? With the Holloway. Yeah, 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 and yeah, after so. that, he was telling me he broke both his hands, he fractured his nose, his mm. eye, and his foot in that fight. That's yeah. when he started Muay Thai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was before the fight. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, no, he's a uh, he's a uh, he's a uh, he's a good nice guy as well. Um, the beat, he's fucking unorthodox, Real crazy sick, shit, isn't he? Sick, I like sick. watching him. He does like he does like the sambo. So he, he's he's like an all round kickboxer yeah. wrestler. He's good man. Yeah, good, very good. He's that Korean zombie, boys, that one. isn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's that Korean zombie. That zombie, yeah, yeah, that zombie. I've never, I don't think I've seen too much of him. What's his style like? He's just he just walk forward, banger. Yeah, like, just a scrapper, isn't he? He's but, fighting Ortega next. Well, actually. some yeah, isn't he? Um, well, someone like him, I'd think that'd suit you because mm. you're sharp, you're fast, mm, mm. and if someone's just gonna, they can't walk, just walk into you because you'll fucking light them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Do you know what he's dead good at as well? Is like finding people's patterns dead quick. Yeah, you know, you tie, you'll use the first round to like find your feet, find out what they're doing. You know, but he fought, like within. 30 seconds he'll know your patterns he knows what you're doing and then he'll just That's, go through his game you know what being like... able to read a fighter is a fucking gift yeah. it's a very tough thing to do but um, there's some people out there which can just fucking yeah. pick it up like that so mm -hmm. if, you, if you can do that it's like even when we spar I, I'm awkward and I like to be awkward on purpose and with it, I try something he just catches me out and like oh, he's got me again you know Yeah. so looking to bounce into these rankings and who would you like from there Onwards. Is there any of them where you think, you know what, my style and his style will either one, make for a sick fight, or two, I'll wipe him out? Or do you think you'd wipe them all out? 
They were all very good. The whole top 15. How long good. has he, Balboa's been around for? Hey, crazy story. I got offered, I got offered to fight him this month. Really? Yep. Yeah. I, should, I could have been fighting him on for the this fight of island. Oh, no way. Wait, oh, is, he, is he fighting then? Or? He's I think fighting, he's fighting yeah. this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's supposed to fight number 12, Sadiq Youssef. Right. Um, Sadiq's got injured, so he's fighting Americani now. Amer yeah, Americani, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, man. They, they, they how come, how come that fighting happen where you could we not get enough nah, noise? I wasn't, I, for, for one, it wasn't. It's a big fight, isn't it? Man, for a fight like that, he's fucking that. He's been a legend, isn't it, yeah, How, yeah, how many yeah, years yeah. has he been around? Fucking forever, top level for years. years. Forever. Yeah. I had hamstring in. Like it just, it just wasn't right. The timing yeah. wasn't right, innit? Um, but Danny Gay, that'd be a good fight for me. Um, Ryan Hall's just a nasty jiu-jitsu guy. Bryce Mitchell as well. That'll be a good fight. All of them guys, man. But All you, of them guys. You say a nasty jiu-jitsu guy. Ramos is a... So the last fight, the guy's a black belt. Yeah, yeah. Got, uh, the commentator head, was yeah, saying about got that. Got his head yeah. punched in and guard. Oh, yeah. Guy. Did, didn't he fucking take you back at one point? You just yeah, switched yeah, yeah, around as well. He was actually yeah. drilling that in the changing room beforehand. So it's, it's sick that it come out, man. Are you in his corner then when he fights? No, not no, yet. Not yet. No. Cool, cool. Don't like me that much yet. <laughs> <laughs> Schooly, what, uh, what question were it that you you had for, to ask? You wanted to ask some, didn't you? I forgot what you said though. Uh, there's loads. <laughs> one of the <laughs> one of the questions uh, a fan was wanting to know is uh, who would you pick out of this top fifteen, which we've we've basically just was brushed upon. Who right, you, you've got though? one fight this weekend and said right, you've got to pick one. You've both fighting this weekend. Who are you picking? Holloway. Holloway. <laughs> yeah, Holloway. that's what we like. That was sick. Yeah. So speaking of Holloway, obviously. A very controversial loss to Volkanovski on his on his last Very. fight. I'd like to hear both of your thoughts on this. What what were your thoughts on that? Do you do you think that Holloway lost or how did you feel? Personally, I thought Holloway won. I yeah, actually, same. do you know what? Yeah, I, I, I was on Fight Island when they was fighting and um, I was watching the fight, but it was early hours in the morning. I was knackered. I watched the first three rounds and then turned it off. Holloway won every single one of them rounds. And when I woke up in the morning and I seen that... Um, What's his name? The other guy. Volkanovski. Volkanovski of yeah, one. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. You know, was like I was, I was confused. Well, that I, was a bad I, result, that. Yeah, well, I thought the same. I thought he'd done so well early. And then, did he, is it like tie boxing? Can you lose the last two that bad yeah, where you yeah. lose the whole yeah, fight? Yeah, or yeah. what? I don't the, know how it scored, but nah, it's judges, scored body the, kick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the judges are supposed to, <laughs> supposed to write down 10-9 or whatever <laughs> at the end of the round. And that's it. You can't change it. Right. So he should have he won the fight. Yeah, because opinion. when I watched it, I thought it was going to be three to two. Mm. He died off a little bit towards the end, yeah, didn't he? But yeah. I thought he won the, fir the first half so convincingly. How did you see it? That's the exact same. I just thought he won the fight. Volkanovski got dropped twice as well, once yeah. in the first round, once in the second. Yeah. So how, how does that work with judging then? Because that's that's what I, I'd love to hear from your point of view. You guys are in this field. Mm. How, how, how? I think it's about like your cage control and that. And it was right. a big thing at the time where if you got got a takedown to like secure the round, if it's even, you get the takedown, mm. then you'll probably win the round. But if you're taking down like in when he fought um, Tukagov and you're doing nothing with it, yeah, then a lot of the judges are starting to come away from that because... You don't want to see loads of boring fights, do you? No, of course not. In one championship, they tell you the MMA fights are not judged round by round until we're going to judge it as a whole. So it's not judged round by round. They tell you this in the meeting yeah. before it, yeah. So it's so whoever of, finishes stronger wins the fight. Basically, yeah, yeah, basically that's what they actually say this to you in the meeting before the no the rules meeting before the yeah. fight. They say like, oh, so we're not going to judge it round by round. It's only MMA. The, mad, the kickboxing though. and the Muay Thai is round by round and. Like, Wouldn't you just start, start slow though? That's what I was thinking. And, and it don't really make sense because in the Thai boxing fights, in the rules meeting, they mm. say, right, cool. we want knockouts. We want action. Mm. So if you start moving around in the last round, we'll take 10% of your purse I was going to say, yeah. don't, yeah. don't they, they do the like purse? the yellow card system? Yeah, if you get yeah, your yellow card, yeah, if you're not fighting, they like the book Imagine you. Imagine that. Imagine <laughs> okay, they run on a book no. you <laughs> and they say, if you're not fighting, 10% of your purse. If you try and touch gloves like they're doing Thailand stadiums, 10% yeah, yeah, yeah. of the purse, they'll take it off you. And if like... um if like you don't start fast enough, they'll just do that as well. Do you know what? Yeah. I I never really f um, knew how vicious Muay Thai was until I went to Thailand. And yeah. I, like I used to always think it's like some technical battle, and then when I went over there and I was watching some fights live, it's like wow, these guys are killers, man. And now you've put everyone in fucking them little tiny gloves. It's it's even yeah, worse yeah, as well yeah. because you make one mistake in them, you just get your fucking lights. I was saying that before. Do you remember Axe? Yeah, yeah, Axe yeah, Forum. Yeah. I remember saying on something on there years ago. Like imagine this in. MMA gloves, mm. three rounds, and everyone was like, "No, no. that was so stupid." Uh. It's we can't <laughs> yeah. dilute it. It's yeah. pure Muay Thai. Antichrist for yeah. a while yeah. on me and stuff. Yeah. But 
And now everyone's like, yeah. ah, get him in MMA gloves. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's exciting to watch. It's When you've got like the top level guys, like the ties coming over as well, um, I love it just because it fucking suits my style down, mm. down to the ground. I wouldn't fucking... I wouldn't really fancy fighting like Nongo with big gloves on and that, like just getting fucking kicked around for five <laughs> rounds. But you put me in them, I think to myself, there's a chance yeah, I will chance, land yeah, a bomb yeah, yeah, on yeah. him and knock him out. Um, what were the next next questions, Schooly mate? Uh, big fight coming up this. Uh, I think it's next weekend. Obviously, in your division, Ortega versus Korean Zombie. Mm. How do you both feel that's going to go down? What's your predictions? I'd go with Korean Zombie. You know, I just don't think. Obviously, Ortega's good, but I think he's been kind of found out a bit. Just don't, don't, just don't let it get to the ground, in it. Uh, boxing's not just boxing alone, unless you, unless you, Kelvin Katai, it's, it's not enough. He's been out a long time as well, hasn't he? Um, yeah, I, see, I think Zombie's going to beat him. Yeah, yeah he, he Zombie beats him. You could, you've only got a certain amount of tough fights in you, and I think that last fight took a lot out of him. Da, and it, they had a beef as well. Yeah, them. what, what were the beef? Blood. What were it? What were it about? That so some really bad blood. So uh, Ortega supposedly slapped <laughs> Korean, zo <laughs> Korean Zombie's manager. Fucking uh, hell! Who's supposedly <laughs> some superstar, um, some singer, or so, is in a band or something like that. <laughs> Slapped him backstage. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? that's fucking funny though. To be fair, wow. what what did he slap him for? So he's supposedly he runs Korean Zombies Twitter, and he started uh, talking trash to Ortega. So Ortega knew it was him typing, doing the tweets. So he just went up to him, slapped him. That's yeah, sick. Thought, yeah. yeah, that's how you should be, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Thought, I behind the keyboard, yeah. Yeah. Shit, called him a keyboard warrior. <laughs> So, yeah, I think that, that fight's going to go off. Right, honest. fuck this. Next time I get trolled on Instagram, then. <laughs> I'm fucking fighting you. I'm slapping you down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who have you got for that, Andy? Have you got? Yeah, Korean Zombie again. You don't know who he is, but... Yeah. <laughs> I do. No, I do. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> uh, is, he any, is UFC on this weekend, no? Oh, no, it's boxing. Oh, that's, that's do you know what's bad? I've seen that many fights, mate. You probably yourself... Like sometimes there's fights and I'm just like yeah whatever. Yeah, oh it's one championship this weekend. Yeah. That's what it is. I know some of were on this. He's week. fighting. He's fighting. Um, it's all MMA other than one fight and the main main event to tie boxing. It's yeah. uh, Sam A versus Josh Tonner for uh, strawweight title. Oh Sam A's that one that fought Haggerty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, he's moved damn weight now. Though, he? but he's back to his normal weight yeah, because yeah. they've opened up. What they did was. Um, it won't really, it was a bit shit for ties who were like small like him because mm. the lowest weight was 61, 135. Okay. And he only fights at like 122. Two. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, when yeah. he fought Agate, he just got, he just couldn't do all, got he smoked, got smoked yeah. yeah. He got dropped twice. Yeah. And then they've opened this new division, signed loads of people. He's moved down to his normal weight, won the K1 belt, the kickboxing belt, and the Muay Thai belt, and yeah. now no one can get it back off him. Well, yeah. he's smashing <laughs> people now, yeah. yeah. He's, just so, he's, he's at his normal weight and he's just so good. He's 38 now as well, mm. Sam A. And he's just still fucking. Savages. Mate, he's terrifying still yeah. at that when he's at that weight. I think it was, it was just a bit too small for for Agate. But he still did all right. Like, but Agate is fucking big for that weight as yeah. well. For one, a lot of five. casual fans like think the bigger they are, the better the fight. But the smaller guy, it's action packed, months, yeah. mate. Well, if you, anyone out there wants to watch any of Sammy's fights, go watch them yeah. because in the little gloves as well, he can punch, he can elbow, and that left kick is absolutely mm. fucking disgusting. Uh, the rest of the cards, MMA, I'm not actually sure. The rest of them are to be, to be honest. I'm not too sure, but I know they've got a big one coming up soon. Um, it's got like four title fights on. Um, is it Anlang Song? Is it Anlang Song? I'm out of touch with the like the Thai scene. The at the big, moment. Uh, he's a Burmese one. He's like one of their. He's like he's big though. He's like might be everywhere or something like that. But I think he's fighting. Um, next questions, schoolie mate. Uh, Lerone, you've got a real incredible, inspiring story, mate. I know you've talked about it briefly. You don't have to go into big details, yeah. but it is. Very massively inspiring. You spoke about it in a few interviews. Would love to hear from you what what actually happened. Yeah, so uh, about twenty one, I uh, ended up getting shot coming out of a barber's, um, and that kind of changed my life around. Well, what I was doing to day to day and stuff. I ended up getting into MMA at the end of that year, and that kind of took my mind off everything. Um, but growing up, that's like to me. To me, it's like a normal thing. I know. I know when people are reading my story, it's like, wow, that's some madness. But I've grown up around it. Do you get what I'm saying? My uncle got shot and killed. Um, my cousins who had friends, family. Like to me, to me, it's normal. Did um, you got shot in the in the face? In the face yeah, that's yeah. fucking crazy. What were the injuries? Were it bad? Like, my mouth, did you get lucky escape? Definitely lucky yeah, escape. Yeah, yeah. definitely but lucky escape. Did that miracle change your life around for you to find MMA after that? Or did you already started MMA? Nah, just it, I didn't. 
it, it just happened. It just yeah. ha- fell into place. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it just fell into a, a gym just opened up in Manchester, maybe around the time, and I just started training it at the end of that year. So it just fell into place, really. But did it fucking just go straight through? Really? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, is straight. No, nah, no, nah, 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 one got lo- I got shot twice in the face. Fuck one got me. one got lodged. and one come out. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Madness, you know. Did you spit the bullets out? Yes. Fucking hell. Do you know what? That incredible hook. (laughs) (laughs) So it like it like knocked me out for a second, and like when I woke up, it was like it was like Call of Duty where you just hear like a ringing, and I'm like ring, and then I like stood up. And it felt like my mouth felt dead heavy. Do you get no, what I'm saying? No one's going to fucking stop you with punches after you've been <laughs> shot twice in <laughs> the face. That's what I'm saying, man. Fucking iron chin over here. That's what I'm saying. I've been through it, man. So it's, it's like, it's nothing to me. And then I got up and I spat him out. <laughs> <laughs> Nonchalant as you like. Yeah, fucking hell, that is crazy. Um, I think that helps, like, when it comes to the fighting, me honestly, of course, you've been through that, mate. Well, that, so what, what, you what, you're not gonna a, fucking just fighting what, another yeah. man normally. <laughs> That's nothing. Yeah. It's being yeah, well, you don't, shot. You don't think about that it. That should it's be fucking scenario. classed as like a performance in hunting drug. That <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, I'm not fighting that guy. He's <laughs> clearly got a steel chin. <laughs> That's what I'm Did you just so, have an operation or anything? Or what? yeah, what? yeah, yeah. It's like I was in hospital for. I think I was in, only in for ten days, and I went part life after that. But yeah, wrapped your chin back up. Fucking hell, that is crazy. Um, next questions, Grant. You started off MMA pretty obviously uh, into your early twenties. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty two. So, what I'd again probably for both of you is what I'd love to understand from a fighter's point of view in MMA. Is it better to be a specialist in one skill, or is it better to be an all round MMA guy? Because obviously you've got your Khabibs, you've who with the wrestling backgrounds. You've got mm. maybe Diaz, is is a BJJ background. What do you think's better to have a specialist in one of those or all round? For me personally, I think you got to be an all rounder, um, and you, I think like you got to take the best parts of everything you can. Um, not try and be a submission artist in all all aspects, but like maybe learn two and just master them in the boxing. Um, I think you need to be well rounded. A lot of guys are getting found out. They're just wrestling, no striking. You stuff a few takedowns and you just bang them out. Like you, yeah. you can't, you can't get found out. You got to be good at everything. I think. I got to understand. Like everyone says, these Dagestanis are all wrestlers, but they do sambo as well. Yeah, mm. which is like Thai with wrestling. Yeah, yeah. They mm. literally wear them foam shin guards you see in the amateurs, a pair of gloves and it like a gi top, and then yeah. they just scrap it out. <laughs> so they they they're fighting like Thais. They probably had hundred fights by the time they're fifteen. So. Yeah. In this day and age now, everyone's like. Everyone's like wrestling. Everyone's doing everything. Do you got know what I'm saying? So everyone's good everywhere. So you got you got to be well. Yeah, I think if now. you can box, wrestle, and throw a a, a good, decent kick, submission defense. Yeah, well. but that goes back to like anything really. I think like even in just say boxing, if you're just the fucking, if you everyone knows you've got one powerful shot and that's a mm. left hook, mm. they won't move the hand. Exactly. Yeah, say yeah. if in, in MMA though, if you're if you're only a puncher, who's gonna stand up with you? Yeah, yeah. Or if, if you've only a wrestler, who's not gonna want to go down ground ground with you? Yeah. Like it comes back to like you said then, being an all-rounder and when we're on about early, like saying there's always something to fucking improve mm. on. Yeah, of course, there's of so course. much, to, there's so many ways to lose, which yeah. is what makes it so difficult and at the same time, fucking so good to watch because I, I before when I started tie boxing before and MMA came around, I was never interested in it mm. and then I started training a few of fighters and stuff like that and I started having to adapt my own style of coaching these guys and because I wasn't really realising how many ways of what to lose? So I started watching it more and getting more into yeah. it, and I'm thinking, "Fuck me, this is hard. Yeah, it's mad. This it's is mad. fucking hard." It's and mad. I thought, you know what? Because I'm only ever watching the stand up, and a lot of them like the stand up, like fucking don't look amazing. Mm. Because you can't just stand there, like we mentioned earlier, you can't just stand there and make your kicks look nice and mm. set your punches to fucking full power because you'll leave yourself wide open and get taken down, so, yeah, submitted. Yeah. Something will happen here. So now I appreciate it more. I, and I tell you what, I appreciate it more now as well. Unorthodox striking. Because I never re- used to really like that before. I think, uh, looks a bit fucking scrappy and stuff that. But I like the unorthodox shit now. Mm. Not as some of the stuff that just comes out of nowhere. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. we're on about Zabit earlier. He does loads of weird shit that mm. I love. Like, obviously, you can't be, we said it before, you can't be arrogant enough to think one 
sport will be all can can you mm. for no, me for me as well it's like just knowing your strengths and working around that kind of thing i'm i'm predominantly i'd, I'd say boxer I yeah like my hands are, I, I, my hands have you are boxed my... before because when we were on pads earlier i thought you you started straight away and bang, 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 I thought, yeah. fucking hell, that was not sharp. really not really i just used to obviously my uncle my uncle used to like be a like a big coach um oliver harrison oh is that your and, uncle yeah, 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 yeah. oh i never knew oh, oh, that that's sick, right, right, yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's my uncle yeah so. oliver and um, um, Humphrey, Humphrey, yeah 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 oliver, yeah so we used to as kids like probably like 10 12 we used to go into the gym put the gloves on and just scrap just each other we never got coached do you get what i'm saying yeah, we yeah. scrap but that's the only kind of boxing i've done well if anyone no oliver were like a massive massive name in the, the thai boxing really like late 80s early 90s yeah did he train under mm. master ray was yeah, it? i think so yeah. master ray master toddy wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah yeah i think it was that wasn't it but yeah he were, he were a massive name i, ne I never school, knew guys yeah i never knew he was uh, yeah, uh your uncle that's class um next question mate just final question just from one of the youtube subscribers is he said Lerone, has has your hand injury fully healed and how do you train around it when you have grappling and striking to train? So for the grappling, it's never, never, ever been a problem. For the striking, for the first two years, I think I tried to start punching um, too soon. And for the first year, it used to swell up and stuff, but it's been it's been sweet now. Obviously, I'm a professional, I wrap my hands and stuff, so it's been sweet. Now, do you know what? Like the first time I ever sparred with a own. I've got a decent chin and like in Thai. <laughs> yeah, honestly, in Thai, Chris Whittle dropped me, yeah? He took me like apart, kneed me in the face, kicked me in the head. It's different. Yeah. He hit me with a right hand once when we were sparring. There was no power in it. And like, my hands just dropped. I had my head springing. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck was that? But that right hand's naughty. What did you do? Did you fucking punch him on top of head in your, in your yeah. fight? Did you hit the top of the yeah, head? Yeah, first 20 seconds of... Because, do you know what? The, the reason I've done that is um, I was doing a lot of touch sparring at a time, so that creates bad techniques and I used to punch with my hands yeah. open a bit, you get what I'm saying? And then end up throwing an overhand right and my hands just went shattered. Oh, I did mine. Mine's plated there and I did mine fucking around with uh, Stephen Malidi um, and I punched his hip bone and I hit him straight on the hip bone <sighs> and I put my hand behind my back and went, brought my hand. You just knew straight I just knew away, I brought, He went, fuck off, no you man. He said, I brought my hand. I said, I brought my hand, mate. He went, show me. I put my hand back, my knuckle had gone, oh. a bone had come through its skin. I went, oh, fucking hell. hell. I was defending my WBC world title five weeks later. I obviously had to pull out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the operation done. They stripped me of my WBC title. Said, right, we're stripping someone else. Five Is that the one you beat as a hoot? Was it? It's a toot for, yeah. And they said, they're stripping you from the, uh, the title. I went, fuck. Got the operation done in December. And then I was defending my Yokao title in March. And I thought, you know what? I thought, I'm not fucking pulling out and losing two. I, I, oh. I held three at the time. I'm not, I thought, I'm not losing two of them. Fuck so you that. Thought, yeah. So I got one. Of, I got the operation done. I got one of them claws. No, I put my hand in place. Mm. I just kept the claw on. They said to me, don't train. I'll punch out three months or about 12 weeks. And I fought after 10 weeks. Wow. I just trained my whole camp with that claw on. I clinched with one hand. And I thought, all right, when I get in there, because my left duck's my hardest punch. Yeah, yeah, I thought, yeah. do not throw your left hand. Straight First thing, I went, <laughs> boom. <laughs> Again, I thought this. I thought Yamamoto, you know, Tetsuya Yamamoto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First thing I did, I went bang. I thought, fuck, that didn't hurt. Instinct. Yeah, and I got out ringing me. I'm fucked for again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you break it again, yeah. No, I didn't break it. Obviously, the plate had held it in place, but mm. you just because all the ligaments around it yeah, went yeah, strong yeah, again, yeah. he just swollen up like a fucking balloon. That's what mine done. But first fight yeah. back. First yeah. fight back. Um, Jamie Lee knocked some kid out with the right hand. My hand just blew up. I thought I broke it again. And I was scared then, but after that, it just rehealed. What, yeah, um, I think it heals stronger than it. Yeah, but this one now, this hand of mine is, is stronger than ever, like my left. But this one, because that big lump on this one, yeah. I broke that one and I were in Thailand and I thought to myself, oh, fucking hell, my hand's broken. I got to hospital. I went to hospital and they went, yep, yeah, we'll need to operate. I thought, fucking not doing that here. <laughs> I thought, like, you know what happened to Dan McGowan's hand in Thailand, don't you? Did he get infected and stuff? Oh, well, it? fucking hell. They meant to. He's got a plate in his hand. And what happened was they missed one of his fucking ligaments and <sighs> stitched his ligament onto his bone wow. which then meant he couldn't fucking make a fist for 18 months yeah. at least he still came out with his dick yeah 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 it <laughs> could have been worse um so yeah they fucked his hand up totally so i'm so glad i didn't i've got arthritis in my right hand now because i didn't get it operated on but i'm so glad that i didn't because that fucking monstrosity could have happened because no, i went Jesus. i went in hospital and they just went right we need to operate i went no nah, no sir, see you yeah. later <laughs> yeah. so i just left and then by the time i'd got back to england it'd been about 10 days later too so late, can you yeah. operate they went it's too late it said it's, it's fucking starting Start yeah yeah um coming back to you obviously with your injuries is he out, you can go doing for rehab is he out special you because i know a lot of people ask me all the time what do you do for injury prevention is there any sort of rehab or anything like that you do when you are injured i'm doing the best one at the moment it's not training yeah 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 <laughs> just resting i'm just resting so because it, it herniated disc like the discs popped 
and it's on um, on the nerve that runs down the right side of my body. So as soon as that inflames again, if I do anything, it'll just. So it's just about keeping the inflammation down and that. Yeah. So just not even training, just no. coaching and. What do you do for recovery? Is there any cryo, ice bath, CBD, all like that? Yeah, so um, I've just got some game, a game ready machine I've used on. No, so no, I've got a game ready What's machine. now. it's like it's like basically I've got different attachments. Got an elbow attachment, a leg attachment. It's like it's like a boot you put on. Um, you put ice in the machine and it runs like ice cold water through and compresses it at the same time. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, right. right. So this is an issue for me because we'll be playing COD and they were like, "Oh, just get him a game ready." And you're in the load up screen. We're like, "Ellie, you're back." Yo, well, well. <laughs> and then we've like we'll jump out the plane and he's at the end. So then you fucking already one man down. So. Yeah, I got to put my recovery. Be honest, the best is best Restart thing. Though, the game. How does it work? Then is it just for like for your whole body? Yeah, um, nah. Well, just if, like... if you had the attachments, you could. But right. um, I just have like the leg one and the elbow one. Right, so, right. But, to be the worst place you yeah, could yeah, get injured yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. I always get I always get swollen knees and stuff after sparring and stuff, so it's good for good for that. Do you know what? I mine left knee is fired surgery in my left knee last year, so I could definitely do with, with something like that because mm. whenever I have an hard session, again my knee just swells up and then I've just got to fucking sit on the chair with my legs straight because it won't fucking bend. Yeah, 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 What's yeah. it called? It's called a game ready. Game ready. Game ready. Right, so is it practically up. like a little cryo chamber, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah like it's what it is. Yeah, yeah. They, call it, they call it cryotherapy, isn't it? It's still, it's still because for thing. MMA and Thai boxing, knees, shoulders, elbows, they're fucking... Forehead, nose. Yeah. Forehead. <laughs> <laughs> but like your knees and your shoulders and your elbows, like once you get injured there, you just don't ever, ever go away. It's yeah. fucking horrendous. They're bad places to get injured. Yeah. Do you struggle with your hips at all? You know what? I started doing yoga, hot yoga. No, yeah, in, the, in the hot room, I fucking I love it. It's Sick, um, it? yeah. You do it as well. I yeah, can't. Yeah. I can't. But you know what? I, I wish I'd have started years ago. Yeah. It was Joe Rogan who said to do it. Went on there because I, I was telling him about my injury. He said go to hot yoga, and then he said, and this is the game change. He said, and when you've been once, get stoned and go to hot yoga. <laughs> yeah. So I started getting blazed up, mate. I was going. It was like, fucking, <laughs> honestly, I was just fucking like stood up back in room. I could feel every fucking <laughs> fiber in my body like stretching. And I thought, right, the more stoned I get, the better I'm getting at this. How many, how many times a week do you do it? Um, once, when I just in fight camp, just yeah, doing yeah, once. Yeah, but once this week. week I'm going twice. I'm going Thursday and Sunday. Mm. But yeah, like one time me and Jordan got really stoned and I got so stoned I nearly had a panic attack. And I, to, <laughs> I, went, I, went, I went, I don't think I can go in, Jordan. Yeah. You're like, no, you'll be all right, you'll be all right. And then when I got in there, it was like fucking best I've done it. But for a fighter, honestly, I believe hot yoga is, it's, mm. I, I wish I'd have started that like early into my 20s. Yeah. Because I think injury prevention and it, it, I think it's good just for like, your mentality and stuff and just like a bit of a meditation and focus and just yeah, clearing you your head. head. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not dumb though because of egos in fighting. It's like the ego is like, no, I'm not doing that. It's good. Yeah. Well, it's, no, I will always... pass that now. Yeah, we're past yeah, that. Yeah, Let's yeah. pass yeah. that now. But it? there's a lot of people still doing the same. Like we're, we're opening our minds to try new things, but there's a lot of people like, no, I'm not doing that. And they still go kicking like, I don't know, like rolling pins down, you know, <laughs> putting pins down the shins. I get like, messages. Kind of shins, I get I messages know. all the time just saying, uh, is it true that people yeah. like rub bottles on their shins and shit like that? What shall I do? I just go kick the fucking bag, Heavy mate. bag, innit? Yeah, kick yeah, the bag yeah, or yeah, kick yeah. the pads. Condition them, mate. Yeah. 100%. It's, you don't need fucking rub no nah, up and still down. still hurts as well. Like a lot of people, I know checking kicks are like, you need to check a kick, but for me, checking a kick hurts just as much as getting kicked. So yeah, like, yeah. You check a kick, you're like... <laughs> It, yeah, wow. it, does, it does when you got some hard yeah. fucking kicking yeah. yeah. How, how many times a week do you do hot yoga? Well, do you do it? Do you only do it in fight camp, or do you do it like? Yeah, but sometimes I do it out of camp. It's just it just has something to do. It's like my active recovery. I yeah. usually do it on like a Wednesday or something. But I started doing mine on a Sunday morning. Mm. I'm like an active rest day, and mm. for rest of day, like usually on a Sunday, I'll be fucked from an hard reach training. Yeah, yeah. But if I do that Sunday morning, it sort of like refreshes me a little yeah, bit, and yeah. I feel good going into Monday training again. Mm. Then I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try, well in an ideal world, I love, like to do it twice a week, but and I, I don't I never really get around to doing it twice. I like to do it once a week though. Yeah, it's good though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But we're fortunate as well because one of the lads who trains with us and he like co-owns the gym mm. he owns a yoga place as well oh sick so like if we'll finish it was fridays where it will yeah, finish yeah, the yeah. session on a friday we'll finish a bit early and then we'll go over to yoga or like his missus will come in and do a session for us because we've got a sick eater in the gym so. yeah oh nice i'll tell you what, I, what when the first time i went though you were a shocked at system because it's fucking hard ah, yeah, in that hard. room and that honestly yeah. the woman that said to me when i went in she went listen if you have to take a knee at any point or just <laughs> stop just go on your knees breathe get yourself together i'm looking at all these little old ladies in the room yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking sound mate about 10 minutes in i'm like going that's hard. fucking hell i don't know how uh, you do that hi you're not, you're not like yeah well like, no you know what honestly when I, it was joe rogan who told me to do it and i thought yeah. joe rogan does it i'm gonna do it 
and then on that this week. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, paranoid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh, sometimes I, I've just got one limit. I, I went to do some seminars in America and I brought my little vape pen home with me and I thought, just have a little few blasts on that before mm. I go in. And then I thought, right, most don't I get, the better I'm getting at this. And then, like I said, <laughs> I hit it a bit too hard one time. Yeah, yeah. I went, Jordan, I can't go in. He went, fucking get in, you'll be sound. And when I went in, it was like the best I'm doing it. Mm. I always think I'm a balance will be off or something, but I'll just be, be so like in the zone. In the zone. The best yeah, you're yeah. doing it, but if there was a camera there, you'd be like, what yeah, am I yeah. Doing? <laughs> well, Jordan used to come training stoned all the time, saying, "Mate, I can't believe how well I'm training and I'm stoned." I'm like, "Mate, you shit." <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. And you just you just start thinking about thinking, and you're just par- <laughs> yeah. paranoid and that all. Oh, right, uh, as hour is up, unfortunately, guys, I could sit here talking all day. Honestly, I enjoyed that. I'm glad everyone's got to hear your story, mate, and yeah, yeah. I am sure. In another year or so, we're going to see you in the fucking top five of those rankings, mate. Making a fucking, making the UK proud like you're already doing. Uh, Andy, thank you for coming on, mate. Thanks I hope your on. neck gets fucking in, uh, healed up real thank soon. Um, School, have we got any more shout outs we need to do or have we done it all? No, done if you just want to give your socials a shout yeah, out. Yeah, give your social medias a shout out, guy. And where can everyone follow you? Because everyone in the fucking UK should know who you are now and everyone should fucking be behind you. Yeah, man. Just type my name in, Laurel Murphy. You'll find me on all socials. Um, it's Lprezi145 on Instagram. Instagram, hit me up, drop me a message, whatever. Uh, mine's lofty underscore MMA. Nice and simple. Right, thank you guys. Don't forget, Manscaped, you 20, uh, 20% off with the code kicking it. If you want your fucking balls nice and shiny, <laughs> get a toner as well. Uh, we'll be back next week. See you all soon. Peace. Oh, cheers, guys. You know what?